What's up everybody, Wyall with Blockchain Academics, and today we're going to go over centralized versus decentralized exchanges, the pros, the cons, and everything in between. Hope you're having an amazing day, so let's get right into this. First of all, a centralized exchange is a CEX, referred to as a CEX, and they're ran by an organization, a third party that oversees its day-to-day -day operations like maintenance, security, growth, and support. The business model of a centralized exchange is similar to an ordinary exchange, the traditional exchanges that you're on that trade stocks, forex, whatever, you're, whatever you fancy. So they also mediate as a third party that connects buyer and sellers with one another. Now we have a decentralized exchange, which are not as um, popular right now they're still up and coming and they don't have as much volume but they're used through smart contracts a decentralized exchange also known as a dex or a dex is able to operate somewhat autonomously the smart contracts in the dex allows buyers and sellers to trade directly without the need for a third party um, that allows them to maintain the decentralized spirit of the blockchain because it's all about decentralization. So as you can see right there, it's peer to peer. The nodes are running. You don't have that downtime that these other exchanges say that they need to do for uh, upgrades or whatnot. And it's not ran by one single body. So you have that um, peace of mind that it's not going to get hacked, which we'll go into later on. One of the major things that a lot of people talk about with exchanges in general are fees. They want to know how much am I paying for fees? How much am I paying for trades? So centralized exchanges charge a percentage of every transaction, making the overall cost of trading higher than stocks, to be honest. These centralized exchanges, on the other hand, operate very similar to per trade. Um, a per trade fee structure we which we are used to in the form of gas so you need some ethereum or whatever their native coin is for that exchange so for a bridge coin for a bridge crypto bridge a decentralized exchange you may need bridge coin or bit shares to trade on whichever they're running their smart contracts off of so with the fees on a centralized exchange like noted here it gets super expensive because if they're doing percentage of every transaction then you could be paying hundreds of dollars even thousands of dollars where on a per trade on a decentralized exchange you could be paying pennies you know up to a dollar or something depending on the trade here is anonymity where it becomes important for a lot of people do people want to put their kyc which is know your customer um, on an exchange they don't know of, do they want to give all their personal ex uh, information to a third party or to whoever is running these exchanges, which can end up being hacked or leaked and things like that. So some crypto traders want everything to be sent decentralized. They want that security and that anonymity. So with the decentralized exchange, no profile is attached to you. So the downside on that is if you're not filling a KYC is you can't prove ownership of your account. And what I mean by that is if you're assigned a private key to your cryptocurrency decentralized exchange, so the only person who can get in there is you. There's no support to talk to if you lose your password or if you forget your private key. That is just a loss and you claim that to the crypto markets and there's nothing anybody could do about it. So there's the, the, con, the pros and the cons here. It's you want the anonymity, but there's no support behind losing your private key or losing your account or somebody getting into your account and stealing that on top of that um yeah there's no support you can speak to so that you gotta kind of weigh the the pros and cons and see like do you want to sign up with a cryptocurrency that takes your kyc and they need those for anti-money laundering laws or do you want to sign up all privately without anybody knowing anything but you got to take good care of your private keys Ownership, another huge one. So a philosophy that decentralized exchanges reinforces complete ownership of one's asset. This is like the one I uh, I resonate with the most because centralized exchanges, the ownership of the coins, this is what I'm specifically talking about of ownership. It's held by the exchange itself. The private keys are all held basically in like a pool, like a, a whole database, a whole pool of private keys. So because the user doesn't need to provide access to the funds on each trade, by doing this, if you have the private keys, it is you can do um, faster trades. So trade execution is much, much faster. It can even be automated. It is more efficient. But on top of that, like holding a private key and a whole database of private keys, it is the number one cause of crypto theft. We see it on Mt. Gox. We see it on uh, crypto, not crypto, uh, BitRail. Sorry for that. BitRail was huge with the Nano, which was named Railblocks. We saw it on Cryptopia. We saw it on Coins Market. We saw it on so many 
websites and the last one as well this wasn't a private key loss but this was a loss uh, on quadriga where the ceo did pass away and then the whole kind of website toppled with him because apparently he was the only one with the private key or the cold wallet storage um keys which ended up actually being empty so with a decentralized exchange nobody's in charge of it so if a ceo was to pass that wouldn't actually uh cause any losses everybody would still have their private keys because they're oh they're on they own ownership of the private keys and their coins so with this it's the biggest thing that you know i'm a fan of of decentralized exchanges is that you're still an ownership you're you're still owning the private keys you're not handing them over you're not giving them access to them you own all of it so that's what i think that all exchanges should move forward with letting you own ownership of the keys but there's benefits to why they should um have them like they're gonna profit off staking or uh forks and things like that and it's just quicker like we mentioned above here as well so fiat to crypto this is what a lot of people like to do. If they want to trade their Bitcoin, let's say into USDT, a bank's going to need to know the type of information to send to your bank account, like your name, your KYC and all that stuff. So centralized exchanges have the advantage of being the first interaction most people have with cryptocurrencies. They're the one, they're the only to fiat to crypto on ramps right now, because if you're going to buy, let's say using US dollars and buy some cryptocurrency, through an exchange you can easily do that but with a decentralized exchange they're not set up with bank accounts they're not set up with processing companies that you can do fiat like euros or usd or canadian right to cryptocurrency you're gonna have to use um, a centralized exchange for that but what i think we'll see is stable coins being more and more used on decentralized exchanges so like even libra which facebook announced they're working on a stable coin like it would be cool if that was onboarded onto decentralized exchanges or if tether for example which tether a lot of people are iffy about but i know the winklevoss um, brothers twins created a stable coin and there's a ton of other stable coins coming out so if decentralized exchanges had some sort of stable coin so then they can kind of protect themselves from volat volatile markets then that would be pretty cool and that would be kind of similar because then from stable coins they can move it on to an exchange and then sell that for fiat right away and then liquidity is one of the last things because it's one of the major reasons why centralized exchanges have a large lead over decentralized ones because if there's no volume if there's no liquidity it's not going to draw traders or especially whales with large amounts of coins or altcoins like they can't just sell their coins they're going to need to take it to exchange that can support that also without liquidity price discovery is difficult to achieve and this leads to easy market manipulation so all of this leads to what exchange are you comfortable with using which cryptocurrency exchange do you want like do you want to fill out a kyc do you care about filling a kyc and do you care about potentially being hacked with all your information and your cryptocurrency or do you want to use a decentralized exchange you need to know some know-how because the it's not as user friendly there's not as much support and there's not as much tools that you could do for instance like times uh, 100 leverage so you need to kind of balance both sides and see which one sticks with you at the end of the day i wouldn't leave my cryptocurrency on an exchange i wouldn't just leave it there to sit there to kind of just leave my assets there you want to do a trade and withdraw but there's a few things like if you have a trading order like a sell order or a stop loss you can't put that in your hardware wallet or one of your wallets because you can't execute the trade so whatever your plan is just make sure that you do your due diligence that you know what you're doing and just don't leave your cryptocurrency on any exchange and on the centralized exchanges let's say like binance or bitfinex or bitrex these are all or poloniex even these all seem like very up-to-date like secure exchanges but it's happened time and time again where these exchanges go down everybody loses their money i'll give you like quadriga i keep bringing this up because like everybody trusted quadriga quadriga was canada's number one largest exchange i was using quadriga so much a lot of my friends a lot of my friends took losses and it's like i'm grateful that i decided to not hold fiat in um in on or on quadriga and i actually bought it all using bitcoin and then withdraw it and then it went down so i'm grateful for that but it's like so many people put their trust and that's their hard-earned money all of their money it could be a loan even and they put it on this exchange and think that it's so secure but it can go down in this in a matter of seconds so pick which exchange you want you now know the 
pros and the cons of decentralized versus centralized exchanges. So hopefully this will make a more educated decision on your end. So subscribe, like, comment. We also have a Discord you can join below, which I'd recommend because we have a ton of opportunities coming. You can ask me questions directly or every other trader that's in there. So thank you for watching our video and I'll see you in the next one.